Good afternoon. As we celebrate, please remember to observe social distancing, including when processing to communion. For communion and dismissal, please follow the guidance of the ushers. For those who wish to receive communion on the tongue, you are asked to see Father Chris after Mass. As a reminder, following Mass, please exit on the Conroe Street door only, not the King Street door. The parish office will be closed on Monday, September 7th for Labor Day. A reminder that the parish office still needs your email addresses. We continue to provide updates, changes, news, events, and bulletins all through email. Please call the parish office or email us with your email address. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. And welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody. This on the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Of course, schools are opening up and stuff like that, and a lot of uh, excitement with the children and, and different things. It was great to hear those voices around, as I'm sure it is with all the schools. Uh, with the children coming back. But God does continue to bless us in many different ways, and he continues to look at our hearts and the way in which we respond to his graces. So as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal gift. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the mediator and consoler. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of the Most High. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take, you take away the sins, the sins of the world. Receive, receive our prayer. prayer. You, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. Have mercy on us. For, For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy, With the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, 
by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by the, my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening, everybody. You know, one of the things that's hard about giving these homilies sometimes is you have to look at yourself also, and sometimes it's like, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have these, hom these readings like we have today. If we remember even from last week, we remember Peter, how Jesus took him aside, or how Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him because Peter did not understand the sufferings that Jesus was, had to endure. But then Jesus said those words, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. Wow, beautiful words especially as we look at today's readings and the way in which the electionary was uh, put together and it was approved, and to hear those different words about uh, those different readings about fraternal correction, both in Ezekiel and from our, our gospel reading from Matthew. But if I had to guess, I would say that fraternal correction is probably one of the least favorite things any of us would like to do. I know I was even listening to the Father Dave Dwyer on the radio this yesterday. And one of the first things he usually says to a caller who come, come, calls on and uh, there's a complaint about someone else. And uh, Father Dave will usually say, well, have you talked to the person? <laughs> and of course, it's usually one of the last things that people do. Of course, with him living in community, they're always probably giving some type of fraternal correction and talking with people. I know I still don't like to give, have to give correction to people, but I remember even back in the seminary, twice a year we would be given 10 evaluations. We would be given five for people who we were called to evaluate and give some honest critique to and criticism. And we'd have five others that we'd have to give out to other people, and they would have to evaluate us. The last time I had to go through the process was right before graduation. I remember it because I was given about 25 or 30 of them by the student body, and uh, I wasn't given any by the faculty because we were graduating. And I thought, at 
prior to it, I thought, oh, how great this is going to be because I was finally done with it, doing all those evaluations, and now I had a bunch of them to do. <laughs> but we're all called to still do fraternal correction. I'm even called to do it occasionally, especially when we're doing eval evaluations and stuff. Sometimes it's with seminarians and deacons and religious. But it's always kept very private. And anything I usually report on, have, I've already hopefully said to the person. And it's all intended for the well-being of that person and their growth. But in a world like today, it can be kind of, seem kind of crazy for the church to even ask people to do correction. In this culture we live in, where people usually say it's not right to judge anyone or don't judge me. Who are you to judge me? But you know, I find what is even crazier, if you go onto social media and look at all the different ways in which people are plastering things about people all over the net, internet about what they have said and what they have done and all the damage that's being committed, all the damage being done to people's reputation. I know in a few times there's been, where my name has even been put out on uh, social media in your times past, long time past. But usually I just endure it. I usually get told about it by somebody else and I usually have to pray for the person because they usually have obviously need it. One of the funny things was, is one time the person came to me in the sacrament of confession. I think they knelt behind the screen close to the door so they could make a quick exit. <laughs> But I think by the time, the, if I remember right, by the time, the, I don't remember even what it was, but by the time the confession was over with, we were chuckling with each other and we were laughing about different things. And seeing the grace between God's healing and his mercy and his love and the way in which it goes out. But if we go back to the readings, we notice they are telling us, or Ezekiel is telling us about, because he was a prophet. And Ezekiel is saying in that reading how he was a, uh, being appointed to be a watchman for the house of Israel. Well, one of the interesting things that happened this week is there was also, it was also the, uh, we celebrated Pope Leo the Great. And he had a homily. And part of that hom passage in his homily, he said, a watchman always stands on a height so that he can see from afar what is coming. Anyone to be appointed a watchman for the people must stand on a height for all his life to help them by his foresight. And Pope Leo goes on to say that by saying these words, he denounces himself because he says he is slothful and he is negligent. And perhaps by him acknowledging his fault, he will win pardon from his just judge. And isn't that what we're all looking for, for ourselves and for others, to receive pardon from our just judge? Acknowledging one's own weakness is a major component to fraternal correction. Knowing that we are all sinners. Before we can give a correction to anyone else, it is a gift to grow in that understanding of how much we receive and how much we need God's mercy. But we are all called to give fraternal correction. Each one of us who have been baptized because we have all been baptized as a priest, prophet, and a king. We receive these rankings when we were grafted not only onto Christ, but into the life of Christ. And therefore, like Pope Leo, we are also watchmen, looking to see what's coming, looking to see how we can help out other people, 
but also recognizing our own weaknesses. But we also continue to learn from our teacher and our master how he was always reaching out to those who were on the fringes, even the scribes and the Pharisees. But he always did it with love and compassion and with a concern for, the, for their personhood. It's kind of like an alcoholic or a drug addict. Is it always going to work? The way in which we give correction or we're called to give correction? How difficult it can always be, can't it? But we're always called to keep on trying to bring that love of Christ and bring that understanding, that enlightenment to the hearts and minds of the people who need it. Perhaps a quote from Fraternal Correction uh, will be helpful, and it's found in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it's number four, 1432, and it's a quote from St. Augustine. Let us fix our eyes on Christ's blood and understand how precious it is to his Father. For poured out for our salvation, it has brought the whole world the grace of repentance. And is this not what we're attempting to do for our brothers and sisters whom we offer correction? The grace of repent, repentance? Why do we have the tendency to speak to others rather than to go to that person and help them? Perhaps it's good for us to once again remember last week's gospel where Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, then he will repay all according to his conduct. And may Almighty God bless each and every one of us in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Drawn together in faith, we bring our needs to God with confidence and hope. For the church, may the Lord graciously preserve and protect her as a sign of his truth to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, may their leaders be governed by the power of the Holy Spirit in love of and service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those blinded by sin, may the compassionate mercy of God lead them to the goodness and rep rep reputation, repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of worship, through the grace of this sacrament, may we be drawn ever more dearly, deeply into the unity with one another of our triune God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those served by our support of the Catholic Services Appeal, that they might know the power of Christ's message of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died from the effects of the coronavirus, may they rest in the peace of God's perfect love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pat and Joanne Denton, that we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray together a prayer for vocations. O God, oh God we, we earnestly ask, ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes the holes needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of love and truth, you lead us deeper into relationship with you through every prayer we offer. We ask that you hear the prayers we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, food of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us a gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll be using a fourth Eucharistic prayer this evening. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the firstfruits for those who believe so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full.
Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And before we receive communion, just a reminder for people to keep their hands flat when they come up for communion. It's a lot easier for us to put, our, put Jesus in your hand. Make sure the, the uh, uh, sanitizer is dry also. One thing, it won't taste that good, plus we don't want to be putting that in the host and stuff also too, so on Jesus.
sacramentally come at me spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, just a reminder again that uh, Wednesday and Thursday Masses will both be school Masses. Uh, seating will be pretty much limited to the gathering space uh, to accommodate for the children. And these Masses will not be live streamed. Uh, also for all the Masses, especially like after today and uh, after the school Masses, volunteers are needed to help sanitize. Uh, with four people it only takes about 10 minutes and it would greatly uh, be appreciated. Uh, 9 a.m. Mass will also be offered on Monday for Labor Day, uh, September 7th here. It's not in the bulletin, but it will be a ma there will be a Mass. And with that, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ending. Let us go forth to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.